church is on fire when faith is proclaimed. Welcome to Voices in Faith. This program is designed to give our parishioners a platform to share their stories of faith with our wider community. Faith is complete when it is shared, and God is glorified when faith is kept alive. Hello everyone. Welcome to our faith sharing program. Today we have a Deacon Jaime and Audrey as our guest. In fact, this is the 15th year anniversary of uh, the ordination of Deacon Jaime. Congratulations. Thank you for serving the church all these years and welcome Deacon Jaime and Audrey to this yeah. program. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Maybe before I ask you something, can you please tell us something about you, your family, your ministry, or whatever you like to say? Well, when I met in the Philippines when we were 16, she's my childhood sweetheart, in a, our Paris youth group called uh, Teenagers Encountering Christ. And we got married in 1978, moved to, I mean, migrated to the United States in 1980, and the rest is here. We, got, we were blessed with three children, two girls and one boy, and we have one okay. granddaughter. Uh, she's now nine years old. What's her day, what, July? No, June? June. 2006. Audrey. You want to complete what uh, he was started saying? It's okay, Father. <laughs> I'm good. All right. Okay. So, Jaime, you are a deacon, mm -hmm. uh, 15 years. That is a great accomplishment. Can you please tell us something about your call? Uh, who inspired you and how are you enjoying your diaconate ministry? and anything related to that. Yeah. Are we having a, a one hour interview? But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> By the grace of God, I was reflecting on it. Uh, I think it started when we became active in the youth uh, group, mm -hmm. the Teenagers Encounter Christ. It was mm -hmm. a seminarian, a redemptorist seminarian, mm -hmm. who planted the seed for us to be aware of what it means to be involved in the parish, mm -hmm. be involved with our sisters and brothers around our neighborhood, help them especially during typhoon season when we have to help them bring food when the, when the flood water in our area was up to your chest. Mm -hmm. And then through the years, I think it was uh, Father Mike Kuhik, Bill. Our oh, Father Bill first who invited us to consider the Holy Cross Priest. The Holy Cross Priest, yeah, mm -hmm. pastor here, to consider entering the diaconate. And that was in the late 90s, or oh, 80s, I'm sorry. But uh, we were on our final interview, and Audrey and I decided that uh, not to continue because our children were growing up. Mm -hmm. and Two of them were teenagers, Joseph and Jamie, God rest her soul. So we put it on hold. And again, when God calls you, and it's a vocation, He keeps, God keeps calling you and pulling you back. Mm -hmm. And then in nine, and Father Dick became the pastor. That's the time that uh, we were again asked to join the formation. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, after five years of formation, ordained, and the rest is serving as a deacon mm -hmm. in this parish, which mm -hmm. is a great blessing. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you. I know uh, these days we call deacon couples. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are a deacon couple. And uh, Audrey, uh, what is your experience as a wife of a deacon? It is really a great journey mm -hmm. from beginning and continuing even now. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I'm glad I was able to attend the mm. diaconate formation mm -hmm. because in that way, I was also formed. You know how at one point in your life, as we grow, we think we know it all, realizing through the formation, mm. hey, I really don't know anything. Mm. And, and, um, and I'm glad I did that. I attended the classes with Jaime mm -hmm. so that I realized really uh, what he's doing right now. And so as a couple, I'm glad to help others, you know, and be supportive of him in all that he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of you are a part of different ministries uh, in our church and uh, you are a Eucharistic minister and uh, you are always there to support any ministry here and uh, Deacon Jaime you are also doing a lot of things and I think the ministry that is very very close to your heart is uh, peace and justice ministry mm -hmm. is uh, there any reason for that or how do you see the spirituality of that ministry and how is it helping you in your uh, growth as a disciple of Jesus? Well, I look at uh, being a deacon mm -hmm. is the icon of Christ the servant. Mm -hmm. But even before I was ordained a deacon, I had this longing to, to, to reach out. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up surrounded in our neighbors with a lot of poor neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I interacted with them. Mm -hmm. They become my friends, mm -hmm. my good friends. We break bread together, mm -hmm. even though maybe a piece of bread. But I see the the joy in their faces, mm -hmm. and despite the the hardship and the challenges of not mm -hmm. having enough food for the day, is that mm -hmm. they will always welcome me, my friends, to their home. Mm -hmm. And then every time you have the opportunity mm -hmm. to share whatever blessing that we have. Mm -hmm. It's always uh, there's a, a great joy joy in them and the gratitude, mm -hmm. which for me, I look at it as I'm not serving them, mm -hmm. but actually they are serving me, mm -hmm. and that carries on with the deep sense of helping, especially now here in the parish, which is as a deacon. That's my call to look at the needs of the community mm -hmm. and master the resources of the church mm -hmm. our parish to mm -hmm. be able to help those who are in need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is it's not only giving food which yeah. is essential but also to be able to speak truth to power mm -hmm. to be able to address the the systemic injustices in our mm -hmm. uh, society through prayers mm -hmm. and of course mm -hmm. dialogue mm -hmm. and that's why social justice is really a, a big mm -hmm. ministry for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think uh, uh, peace, justice, all these are kingdom values. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, when we read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, when Jesus talked about the final judgment, yeah. after asking, I was hungry, did you feed me? Questions like that. Then Jesus said, well done, faithful servant, enter the kingdom of God. So it's very much kingdom values. And uh, I noticed that you are very much in that because when I listen to your homilies, your uh, other uh, discussion, always this dimension comes. Huh? Yeah. As, uh, I think that's a, a great inspiration for me and for other people. Sometimes uh, when we talk about the spirituality, we don't uh, focus very much on this. So thank you for doing and uh, taking that initiative in that, okay? And uh, uh, also, you, I'm sure, Audrey, you also share the same views with uh, uh, Jaime, yeah? About the uh, importance of this ministry of serving others. Uh, I remember you mentioned you, your ministry is ministry of service. Can you say something about that? Jaime's favorite saying is talk is 
key. So if you say something, mm. you have to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why besides serve, I mean, service is not just mm -hmm. extending a hand, mm -hmm. but also extending prayers. So mm. for me, I, I pray for him that he would preach what he believed mm. and believe what he preached. And we mm. should live the way he preaches. Mm. So I, I really am uh, very supportive in all that he does. So mm. whatever I, whenever he needs help, I would be there putting away the canned goods mm. after the mass mm -hmm. in the pantry mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I am glad, I'm grateful Mm -hmm. uh, to have that opportunity mm -hmm. and also to pray uh, I'm his prayer warrior so I pray for him mm -hmm. before and during his mm -hmm. homily mm -hmm. and also uh, where before he goes to the meeting during mm -hmm. the meeting and mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm 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 blessed to have a deacon husband mm -hmm. You know, I like something you said, you know, uh, you support his ministry uh, specifically by praying for him so that uh, he is able to do what uh, he really wants to do from his heart. I think that is an important ministry. Maybe I can follow that too, you know. Uh, I need to pray for those who are in ministry, maybe pray for my deacons, pray for my priests, or they also do a great job, you know. Uh, you know, supporting one another is a great ministry. Thank you for sharing that insight, okay? And also, uh, I know that uh, you are very much in family and you have uh, great family values. Uh, that's why when I was discussing with uh, uh, family ministry, they can hire me was generously or uh, willingly uh, ready to take that initiative. Can you talk about something about family, why family ministry is important? Um, the family is the, the local church. Mm -hmm. And from that emanates your faith out into the community. So it's important that the family is formed in a very strong anchored in the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And for all the fathers, I just want to let you know that you are the spiritual leader of your family. The wife, the children should see that you are the one taking them, leading them towards Christ. Family is important because it holds society. Mm -hmm. And I know we're all focused on the material side of things to support our family, mm -hmm. which is essential. Mm -hmm. To situate that education-wise, we provide for our children. But we, and I'm guilty of that, lack on the spiritual side of the family life. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? going to church mm -hmm. when my children were growing up I didn't know until they they're adult that they're observing us mm -hmm. if we if with going to church is really important for us mm -hmm. and then praying the rosary when my kids were growing mm -hmm. we pray the rosary mm -hmm. we have a family rosary mm -hmm. prayer and then establishment of traditions and I'm not sharing how mm -hmm. family is important in growing closer to each other into Christ. Mm -hmm. Tradition we always have to go on vacation once a year. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're in Davis or wherever they mm -hmm. but there's a week that we will gather for a vacation. Mm -hmm. Even now, praise God, by the grace of God, uh, we always go together on vacation. Mm -hmm. And then we pass on 
this faith into our children mm -hmm. and even I'm you know so proud to share that with you to our granddaughter Kinley because we train I mean we encourage her to pray especially during meal mm. as we share mm -hmm. you know I call that the tabletop ministry mm -hmm. we pray and she will lead us in a simple prayer yes. it goes like this Lord, bless this food which we're about to receive and bless the poor children. Mm. And that's a prayer that has been... And we do the prayer not only in our house, but even when we're out in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's how we transmit our faith and our mm. spirituality to our children mm -hmm. by our words, but most of all by our example. Mm -hmm. And... Or do you mean want to add some? I've been talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> our, our family is not perfect, mm. but there is one thing that I, the two of us remembered when we got married. The priest homily says, do not let the sun mm -hmm. set. Set. set without making up the differences that mm. you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, despite the many trials or, you know, fights. differences or fights <laughs> that we may have, mm -hmm. I'm glad and very grateful mm -hmm. God allows us to forgive. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's the main, main, uh, the main thing that God has graced us with. Mm -hmm. The ability to be able to forgive one another say, I'm sorry mm -hmm. yeah. and to be able to say of course mm -hmm. I'm sorry mm -hmm. so uh, to continue the same conversation uh, you were talking about the family mm -hmm. and the family prayer talking about your grandchild praying mm -hmm. uh, you know you are a praying family you you both are praying people I know that I have seen it okay and also, you know, you have a, a deacon group. Uh, how do I say that? You every day pray with the other deacons mm -hmm. every evening, in the church prayer, etc. Yeah. Uh, in that prayer, you also pray for uh, those who are sick. You know, I remember your group was praying for my mother also, yeah. you know. So I think that is a great example for others too, you know. You are not only limiting that prayer in your family, you are extending that spirit of prayer with the other deacon families, you know, together as a group. I think that is a great thing that you are doing, you know. I think we all are able to do that, you know, not mm -hmm. only praying for us, praying for the wider family. You have uh, anything to share about uh, how you deacons get together and pray? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the blessing of, if you call it a blessing of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. When uh, we were uh, locked down uh, last year, mm -hmm. this was difficult for all of us, a challenge. We started like the three of three deacon couples started to kind of talk and said, you know, why don't we pray? the liturgy, liturgy of the hour, which is the prayer of the church, mm -hmm. which is required for all deacons mm -hmm. and clergy yes. to pray it every day. Um, so we started um, gathering like uh, what called the uh, evening prayer. It's a series of prayer. And then we started inviting other deacons to come in. And with the grace of God, uh, we gather at 4 o'clock to pray the liturgy of the hour, evening prayer. And at times we invite uh, speakers, like I know Father Sebastian, we ask him, I think twice, right, to give a reflection. Then we have uh, Bishop Aklan to give a reflection. So we yes. ask uh, uh, other uh, clergy or speaker to come in and give a reflection. And then later on it warped into uh, asking the deacon leader for the day to give mm -hmm. a reflection mm -hmm. with the intention of edifying the group mm -hmm. 
and at the same time to practice their preaching preaching uh, ability mm -hmm. because uh, it's not threatening because you're all deacon <laughs> except that the wife will criticize you your mm -hmm. homily sucks <laughs> 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 but it's an on ongoing uh, practice mm. all in Zoom so mm -hmm. that's what we're doing mm -hmm. and of course as Father mentioned we pray for the different uh, folks that we know who are sick I think we'll have three pages of prayer name because we have to mention the name mm -hmm. out loud mm -hmm. so Th yeah thank you for doing that you know we all have ups and downs in our life challenges and crises uh, have you had any challenges or crises in your life or uh, if you had how did you handle it or uh, how do we handle our challenges of daily life? You, you have any insight to that? I'll, I'll, I'll defer okay. to Audrey first. Because mm -hmm. as a mother, because it's more... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. During our formation, we lost our oldest da daughter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest challenge that we faced. Mm. And we didn't know at that time whether we should continue Mm. If this is, you know, yeah. why God is doing this. Mm. But we found so much blessing through this community mm -hmm. to St. Francis Xavier. Mm -hmm. First of all, my daughter passed away on the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, mm. yeah. which is where the Carmelites mm -hmm. uh, patron saint is mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say yes and uh, that gave me a real sense of peace at the time mm -hmm. and then I also remembered Jaime saying no blame don't blame each other no mm -hmm. blame whatever it was mm -hmm. God has allowed it because I was questioning that I said if you can do what you did for the daughter of Jair Jairus, mm -hmm. which was the That's gospel that. last mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. Why you couldn't do this for my daughter? Mm -hmm. You know, you could have mm. you could have made a miracle, mm -hmm. but I guess her her body could not sustain her spirit anymore, mm -hmm. and and that's when I said. Lord, why did you take her away from us? Mm. Only for him to say back in my heart, mm -hmm. no, I didn't take her from you. I received her back in my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, oh God, where, to whom can I go to? Mm -hmm. To whom can I turn to? Mm -hmm. And through the help of this community, mm -hmm we were able to rise above that. Mm -hmm. The pain probably is still within. Mm -hmm. You know, just like when you get hurt, mm -hmm. you still have the scar. Mm -hmm. But I think it becomes a blessing in a way because we are able to see the grace of God mm -hmm. coming th through that incident especially when I remember every time we celebrate the Eucharist, mm -hmm. she's present, she's there, especially during consecration. She is, she is singing with us when we sing the Holy, Holy, Holy. Mm -hmm. And what a great reassurance mm -hmm. that we too will be part of that communion of saints. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I know it's not easy, but it shows the depth of your faith. Okay? I hope I, I have that kind of faith in my heart. Eh? We all need to grow in our faith. So I see that faith in you. What a great blessing. Okay? And you also mentioned, you know, how the community when I yes. mean the community, St. Francis Xavier community was there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, can you say something about this parish, this community? What are you proud of this community, if there are a few things? Yes. 
Well, this community is blessed indeed mm -hmm. for several reasons. I think one of the things we are missing is that this parish is holy ground. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? All, all churches, parishes are holy ground, but this one is very particular because a saint, Saint Father Cabrini, walk this ground and we have a chapel and incidentally it's just the patron saint of immigrants mm -hmm. so that alone describes who we are as a parish mm -hmm. parish mm -hmm. of immigrants parish of great concern for each other maybe we don't express it mm -hmm. but you can feel it is that this that's the spirituality of this parish hospitality express in a different ministry of taking care of those who are in need and the joy the joy of gathering mm -hmm. not only during liturgy which is the the source and summit of all <laughs> graces and joy mm -hmm. but when we have you know parties gatherings mm -hmm. uh, we become like Real a church, mm -hmm. not just not not just the edifice, mm -hmm. but the living, breathing church, mm -hmm. and that's one thing I really uh, mm -hmm. count as a great blessing. And of course, during tragedy, you know, we pull together as a family. Mm -hmm. They actually, for me, they actually held our hands mm -hmm. to help us through uh, what we went through. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the parishioners in you probably know her it's Feli mm. she said to me I don't know but I am the one who's crying and crying mm -hmm. and, you know because I couldn't cry anymore mm -hmm. so I said to her those are the tears I cannot shed anymore mm -hmm. you're crying for me bro. Mm -hmm. so that my heart can mend mm -hmm. so that my heart can can see the goodness of God through all this circumstance that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, Nora, uh, Nora Hison uh, took charge of the, you know, the liturgy, the food. Mm. I mean, we didn't have to think any, any of that kind. We cannot think. Because we cannot think <laughs> yeah. anymore, yeah. and like you know, yeah. so another so, yeah. parishioner took us to the cemetery. I mm. mean, mm -hmm. those are s so much help. Yeah. Cornerstone, mm. after their uh, rehearsal, came mm -hmm. to the church and said, "Ask permission, can we sing mm. some hymn for your daughter?" And said, "Yeah, yeah. it was a great blessing." So mm -hmm. like and so many that I, I can't. Yep. I, I will probably take the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Mention their name. Yeah, you know, in real sense, this is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are together. Okay, that's great. Huh? So, let me ask you something very light, okay. funny. Yeah. Do you have any funny stories to share? Anything funny? Well, the um, thing that I remember is that I'm I'm being blessed to be a station a stationary deacon at the cathedral. Which, which means I serve mm -hmm. as a deacon of the word or altar during the mass of the, the Archda uh, archbishop or the cardinal. I was new in the diaconate when I was invited to serve and I remember uh, besting, okay? Because mm -hmm. it yeah. was still Cardinal Mahoney. So mm -hmm. we were processing at the back to start the mass. So he was so excited newly minted uh, deacon mm -hmm. uh, serving at the cathedral and everything and I was like standing there waiting for the start of the mass and uh, Father Trudeau was now a bishop, yeah, bishop. A nice guy he started talking mm -hmm. said, he looks at me like uh, Deacon Jaime I said yes father I didn't know that you were elevated to the priesthood I said, why? I was wearing the wrong 
Chasuble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know because yeah. <laughs> so I was like so it was the mass was about to start. Start. And here I'm facing the dilemma of do I just process <laughs> wearing a priest vestment or what? What will it or just walk? And you know, by the grace of God, I run from the for you to have been in the cathedral, you know how long that thing is, mm -hmm. right? From the where the baptistry is, I run all the way to the sacristy, mm -hmm. change my my uh, vestment. vestment and run back. And it was like once I arrived at the back, the mass started. And I was hopping and popping, but I cannot show it because you know I have to be so that was one of the the I mean funny incident that mm -hmm. I will never forget mm -hmm. wearing the wrong vestment at the cathedral. <laughs> Do you have any not wearing vestment <laughs> anything <laughs> else? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yeah. So, y do you have anything else to share today? What will I share today? <laughs> or what is your message to the parishioners? The the only message I have is that which I always often incorporate in my home is that faith in action, action with compassion. And that's mm -hmm. what I mm -hmm. wanna share with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we end this uh, okay. interview. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Deacon Jaime and Audrey. And uh, as you know we have three great deacons in our parish. Deacon Jaime, Deacon Tony, and Deacon Jim. All these are great people, so we are so blessed. Anybody likes to become a deacon, <laughs> let yeah. us know. We need uh, more deacons in our parish. And friends, today is uh, Deacon Jaime's birthday. Happy birthday, Jaime. I don't know how to sing, otherwise I will sing. Maybe we will sing in the church, okay? Praise God. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Thank you for joining us on this week's Voices in Faith. May God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week.